Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. I'm Grumpy Grandpa Gaming, and this is episode 23 of our Confederate Spring of 62 campaign in version 1.11 using the AOM mod. Now, in the last episode, we saw the Battle of Georgetown between Force Corps and the Army of the Border and their one corps under the command of uh, Cadwalder Washburn. So uh, they are now retreated north up to here, heading towards Quincy, Illinois. So, but we have not regained control of a lot of Missouri because we still have Fort Wyman to deal with. So after the battle, I ordered Forest Corps over here to the town of Franklin to uh, refit and resupply. We have ammunition again, but we don't have provisions and forage. Once we get some provisions and forage, and I'm going to order them down here to Rolla to take down Fort Wyman. Once we have Fort Wyman under control, we should have the state. Uh, support in Missouri is at 54%. And taking down Fort Wyman, which will give us control of the IPs that Wyman does control, which is basically just the central area of Missouri, we should have the state. Or at least be able to draw more troops out of the state anyway. As we can see in Kentucky, which we control all of the estate, uh... Support's only at 51%, so we do have to deal with that. But, uh, we'll do a quick map overview here. So, what's going on, and then we'll go, uh, because it's October 1st, we will go into the October monthly. So, the Army of the Transmiss is still sitting at St. Louis with the Army of the West, which is its first corps, still refitting. Uh, I do have more troops transferring into it, and once they are there, I'm going to send the understrength unit to one of the reserve corps. Speaking of which, I have transferred. I'm, I haven't done it. Did I do it? So I moved both reserve corps under the command of Tradoc. So the reserve corps for the Army of Northern Virginia and the reserve corps from the Army of Mississippi are both under Tradoc now. One's the uh, Reserve Corps East and the other is Reserve Corps West. So that I can send understrength unit to those two corps and switch out with whatever units there that got their strength back up. Uh, I was originally going to leave with their armies, but the order of battle was actually so long, I actually couldn't transfer units over. It, 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 it was a pain in the ass to get units transferred, so I sent both Reserve Corps under the command of Tradoc now. Just to make it a little easier for me. So they're still going to remain near the armies that they were assigned to. They're, but they're basically an east-west uh, repo depot or replacement depot. So they'll still remain in the area of the armies. They're just under trade dock for uh, administrative purposes. Because they'll just make it easier for me. So uh, like I said, the Army of Transmits is still sitting here in St. Louis. With the Army of the West down in the Orange. But as you can see here, by these icons, everybody's moving, it's October 1st, everybody's moving into Winter Quarters. Uh, Forest Corps is not in Winter Quarters yet because they just finished moving to their location. So they haven't built cabins or anything yet, but I'm not going to let them sit in Winter Quarters. I'm going to have them move on Fort Wyman during the winter because I need that, I need this taken care of before the 63 Spring Offensive. Out here in Kentucky, we still only have the Army of East Tennessee rolling around out here, but, uh, Kirby Smith's been handling the job. Uh, he's not in quarters yet either, and he's probably not going to sit in quarters because the Army of West Virginia and their first corps only retreated across the river over here to uh, Evansville. That's as far as they went, so I may have to go back down and intercept them. As much as I would like to have them sit here for the winter, it's probably not going to be happening because he's got to cover all of Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, we do have the Army of Mississippi in Tennessee still. But uh, we'll still besieging Fort Donaldson. And as soon as the siege is over, I'm going to let Third Corps rest and send another corps over to tackle the remainder of the Army of the Tennessee. And what fort is this? And Fort Hyman. So we need, to, we need to remove the federal presence from the remainder of Tennessee. So that's what they're going to be doing for the winter. As much as I want them to sit in quarters, I want to take down these fortifications for the spring offensive. So I can send them into Cairo and retake Island Number 10 and New Madrid for the spring offensive. And that's actually their only objective for this spring. 
is just this right here. Cairo, Island Number 10 in Fort Hammond. And then coming out here to the East Coast, uh, just like I said uh, one or two episodes ago, we have pulled out of Frederick. We held it for a little bit, not too long. We got something. I hope we got some iron out of there. Maybe not much, but uh, the, the entirety of the Army of Northern Virginia is now winter quarters. I have no plans on moving it. Uh, I am trying to give the AI a chance to rest and refit. Well, that's my intent anyway. I'm not making any moves over the winter. Outside of taking down some fortifications. And up in Maine, but we'll discuss that. So, the AI is kind of suffering right now. As Marler Arms is down to 55. So, I'm hoping they don't make any moves over the winter. Which, the AI, I don't know why it does it. But it does make attacks during the winter when it should be sitting in winter quarters. But, uh, it does do that. But I'm trying to give the AI a chance. Because, we survived the, 60, the beginning onslaught of the AI and pushed back hard. And... We done very we done it very effectively, so I'm trying to give the AI a fighting chance for sixty-three. The Union should be able to steamroll us by sixty-three. It doesn't look like it's gonna be able to. But I'm trying to give the AI a chance to do that. Will it be able to? I don't know. And uh, we are still besieging Fortress Monroe. But that's heavily in our favor. I might just I still want to order an assault, and I haven't yet because of that 1600 man garrison. So, if I order an assault, we might just lose. So, I will let that siege continue. And up here in Maine, which this is supposed to be the main course for our campaign, as I stated at the beginning, we are still stuck in Bangor. Uh, I know I got a few comments saying, oh, I'm still surprised you're up there. Uh, well, we actually haven't even gone a full year. Uh,. Even though we're at episode 23, some of these episodes, I uh, can't remember which one specifically, but we, we have a five episode set that happened in the same three days of the game. So yeah, it might be five, six hours of video time, 12, 13 hours of gameplay for me, but three days in game. <laughs> but uh, that's just the way it is. So, uh... It looks like the Army of New England and Department of New England have both retreated well south of us. They're down in Maine now. Or uh, Massachusetts. So, uh, as soon as Hughie's Corps is ready to go. So, we got 29 days. It it's not going to say it right now because I haven't hit play yet. But it's going to be another 29 days for full green readiness. So, I'm thinking the next 5 to 6 days, once he's slightly green. Hopefully by October 5th, 6th, or 7th, I'll be able to push him down into Augusta. And build a supply depot here for him to move against Fort Popham. So, he's... A, outside of taking the fortifications out west, he's going to be actually moving during the winter. And once again, but also to make a siege himself, but to seize Augusta in preparation for moving against Portland in the spring. Because Portland's a big target for us because of this bank. So, like, most people ignore banks in the game... And I'll say that straight out right. Most people ignore them because like they're in areas of the map that we don't play on, so they don't have a big effect. So I'm going I want to see now this is like taking taking Maine, I don't think I've ever seen another YouTuber do this. This was an experiment from the get-go, and as I said, it was also the main thrust of this campaign. I need to keep it that way. I've been doing a lot of our stuff outside of here. But this is my main thrust for the campaign. Is I know we're not going to be able to flip these states. They're not scripted to flip. But we can get the support up. We can draw troops out of them. But taking Portland with the bank here should add a ton of money into our coffers. And I want to see if it's going to do that or not. Because I don't know if it will or not. So, taking this bank should really get our economy running again. Especially if we could control all of Maine, because we'll have all these ports free. With no blockading force in the areas. That should really get our economy running. So, this is an experiment. Not a good one, not a great one, not rarely controlled, but it's still an experiment. So, we'll see how it goes off. 
Alright, I think that does cover everything for right now. So, uh, oh, like I said, <laughs> covers everything. It's uh, October 1st, so it's actually time for the October monthlies. So, uh, let's go through those real fast. So, current running of our nation is Triple B. So, amazingly, for being a year into the campaign mostly, we've only cut three bonds through the entire year. We cut one towards the beginning and we cut two in the last month. And I'm surprised that's the only three that we have cut. Uh, you know where I came up with the number? Well, I've been keeping track of it <laughs> on my notes. Uh, and it, it amazes me that we've actually kept it at that level. But also that's the way I, I think it has a lot to do with where I recruit and draw weapons. I don't order a ton of stuff. I mean, if you ever notice when I order weapons, I, I, I tend to do a lot of it off screen, but uh, you'll see during the initial campaign setup, I'll order 10,000 of that, 10,000 of that. I don't sit there and order 25,000, 50,000 weapons of anything. I order divisions worth at a time. The only thing I order of a lot of at the start is artillery. And that's not even a lot. I order 123 guns of each type that I want. So, uh, only by recruiting monthly, for the most part. Uh, brigades monthly, batteries monthly, uh, and the weapons. As soon as an order is finished, I order another weapon set. But like by recruiting brigades and batteries monthly, and ordering the weapons at division level batches, I have been managing to keep my spending down. But that's going to change very quickly when we come up with the draft. Once I start filling my army up with the draftees, my expenditure is going to explode. Now, I probably won't be able to recruit any more troops. I got two viewer units still sitting on the sidelines. I'm waiting to get in here, waiting for the draft because they're both Louisiana units. So uh, once the draft pops off, I'll pop two to both of those units in immediately. And then after that, we're going to be out of money. Once these armies start filling up, my expenditures are going to explode and explode drastically. We do have a lot of troops in the field right now, but uh, it's going to get very, very expensive very quick. But I'm sidetracking now. So the uh, current economy cycle is recovery. Our population is low and increasing compared to the previous month. Our tax revenues increased by $69 million. I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, we built two hospitals. We did build one here at Culpeper Courthouse. And we built another one at St. Louis. Uh, total export volume was 242 out with $501 million coming in. Uh, average corporate production was $370 million to change a plus $69 million. It probably has to do with um, strictly ordering... Uh, weapons from in-house. I'm not doing any more external orders from the Europeans. So the M-Fields we have are the M-Fields we have. Uh, Lorenz's, all that stuff. I'm not ordering any more weapons from them. And our economy lacks all the standard all the standard items. Coffee, food, locomotives. You, you're never going to... And you see me do this in previous campaigns. I've tried to get a tackle on the economy. Try to get it where we don't want for anything. And it's a fool's errand. You're never going to, to be able to cover all of your lacks. So, because a lot of it is seasonal, a bunch of it is seasonal. But like, fish production is 1.7 thousand demand versus 37.3 coming in. Uh, 1.7 is what we're doing versus 37.3. And in the previous campaign, I had old golf ports open. And we still couldn't match demand. Because demand kept rising. So even with all the ports open, all my fishing all my fishing in operation, we couldn't meet the demand for fish. It's it, it's a fool's errand to try and meet the demands. It really is. So uh, the only thing we could try and meet the demands of is artillery and small arms, and that's if we raise the levels of our one iron mine, which is a very, very expensive. Every time I think that phone's on silent. Which is a very, very expensive proposition. So, I am I going to do it? Yes. But I have to wait until I have all the projects from industrialization that I want. 
So we're going over here to finances. And this is what I find fun about us not cutting bonds. So every month that we've played this game, we've actually been spending more than we've been making, but not by a huge amount. So like we're negative 252 million right now from our total expenses. So we spent 252 million more than we're bringing in, but we really, you've only cut the three bonds, which I'm a little surprised about. And I think that has to do with me going down the line of funding policies before anything else. I think that's really kind of what saved us when it comes to funding. I can't be 100% sure because I'm not doing a controlled test on this, but I think that's really what kept this afloat and my limited amount of spending on the military when it comes to recruitment and weapons. As much as, like I said, as much as we're in dire meat, need for weapons i'm only ordering batches of 10,000. i'm no longer ordering overseas weapons so what we have in stock is what we have besides what we capture all right so moving over to the military so uh according to our intelligence sources the federal government has currently discussed the following policies industrialization three and they've completed suppressed population that explains uh, the levels of Missouri and Tennessee right now. They are actively suppressing our gains. So if you're wondering why state support is so low with over control, that's why. Suppressed population does do that. Uh, they've actually recruited 15,000 men in five brigades. That's uh, They haven't recruited men in a few months, so that's a little surprising. Five brigades of 15,000 men. A couple of infantry, some cavalry and artillery. And they started building another eight new ships. But I hope they aren't... I don't know if you all remember from like two campaigns ago, we ran into a fleet with two Glory class broadside ironclads in it, which was a real surprise to me. So I hopefully the AI is not constructing ironclads on us. I really hope they are not. Uh, the morale of the Federal Army is at 57%, which is a change of plus 10, even after their current loss. And the MA's lost two high-ranking officers, uh, Brigadier General Johnson and Hobart Ward. So that wasn't last battle. That was probably the battle before where I did not check the uh, officer losses. Now they know that that... Because I didn't know at post-battle you could look at the losses for officers. All the years I've been playing this game, I didn't know you can go into that sheet and see what officers they lost. And I did, forgot to check that battle. So... Uh, We've lost a lot of officers wounded. We've been killing a lot of theirs. And sadly, not the ones we need to be killing. We need to kill the good ones and leave the dumb ones alive. So they can keep running the Union into the ground. So, there we go. There, wrong tab. So come over here to Intel uh, National Strategy. Uh, Bull Nelson's still in charge. Federal morale is at 58 for the national to our 85. This is one of the reasons I'm holding off on a lot of offensive operations is we've knocked them down a good, good chunk. In one year, we've knocked them down almost 30%. This is a big reason why I pulled out of Frederick. That's why I'm not continuing operations except for Maine, which is the main push of this campaign. I'm ceasing all operations in Northern Territory. Your national support's still higher than ours, but that's only because we control territory in Maine and Missouri and Kentucky, which are not states for us. So the support's going to be lower because we control states that don't belong to us. Uh, Casualty-wise, basically two to one on the casualties. Uh, they're at 98,274 casualties, who so are 44,704. So... Uh, once again, just like every campaign, it's like we're basically putting out two to one on the casualties. All right, coming over to policies, we are still working on conscripting action one. That's another 64 days away from completion. So this isn't going to be complete until December. I thought it was going to be done in November, but it's not going to be until December when this is done. <sighs> I need it a lot sooner than that, but December's fine. As long as the union doesn't make any moves for the winter, now that we're in October and everybody's going to winter quarters, as long as they don't make any moves, 
I can live with this. There's other things I want to work on desperately. I want to get through Diplomacy 3 and 4 and get down to support Mexican intervention, but we need this first. It, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. I can't delay this any longer. And come over to Projects. Now we have Assignable Only going on. What do we have available? Railroad Construction already took a point in. So I want infrastructure reform as this improves the capacity of all of our trade IPs. So we'll take that. Don't want, Sharps Rifles does nothing for us. Rifled Artillery. I, I've been capturing more Rifled Artillery than I can actually construct. So we're not even taking that. Uh, I should take Calvary Carbines and re, Medium Range Carbines as the Richmond Carbines are taking forever to construct. But... I just need to get the standardization up on the Richmond Carbine, so I'm not even going to touch that. I don't want supply reform, so I hold. I need to hold out for another level of logistics reform. Is what I need to do. Yeah, and we're almost there. Actually, I need to hold out for military railroad. That'll help us a lot. This is something I've never taken before, just because of how expensive it is. Need a funding of 10 million. But once we have this, we will move our troops a lot faster. But I do want to know the level of logistics. We're already at logistics 2. But taking logistics 3 will drop our cost dramatically once we have the uh, draft in place. As much as I want military railroad, we're going to hold out for logistics reform. So I'm not going to take anything military funding wise. What we should take is Occupation Administration. That should help in Missouri and Kentucky. It should help. I'm not saying it's going to. And we actually don't have anything available for... No. Nope. Send Envoys gets more expensive every time you do it. We need 3.9. We have 2. I'm still pumping as much money as I can into diplomacy so I can get the British intervention up. Right now we're sitting at 29%. Uh, next level of this should bring it to around 32 or 33%. Plus the Mexican intervention will jump it up dramatically. So I'm still pushing. It, it's hard to do it with the AOM mod, but I'm still pushing for that European intervention. It, it almost feels like a fool's errand, but I still want to see if I can do it. Alright, so I do believe <laughs> I've been rambling on. I don't even know how long now. I can keep getting sidetracked by little things. But I do believe that covers everything for right now, so uh, I'll be back with the next major event. So it's uh, now October 9th in game, and I'd ordered Force Corps back down to engage Fort Wyman, but it looks like the Army of the Border under Washburn it was actually sitting there. Because uh, they were actually all the way up here. Where were they? So that was our last sign of them, right outside of Quincy. And less than 10 days later, they are outside of uh, Fort Wyman. And we actually don't even see them. I actually have Forest Corps, which is all cavalry on scouting, and we don't actually have sight of them. So this is not going to be good for us. I was just moving them close enough to secure the Rolla Depot and hopefully keep them outside of Wyman's engagement range so that we can grab the depot and then besiege the fort so I can keep them there while the uh, siege is rolling on. But uh, apparently Cod Walder is here with his men. So just like last time, a little less artillery to still outnumber us in uh, infantry, but uh, we have knocked them down a little bit. I forget what the numbers were, but it was a little higher than that. They had more guns and uh, more infantry in the last fight. But uh, obviously we're going to take this one again. I'm a little worried about morale. Our morale's confident, 
But there should be lower after that last defeat. Oh, there they are. His picture was blocking them. All right. So they were moving back down to the fortification to support it. So obviously we're taking this fight. So I will be back after the load screen. Welcome to the Battle of Rala. And amazing enough, this is actually the first Battle of Rala. Usually with uh, any campaign that anybody does, it's uh, you usually have two or three fights out this way. And uh, somehow he actually got the Fulton's Gap map. Don't understand that one, but uh, it is what it is. So the Federals have two entry points. They have one here along the Northwest Turnpike and... This entry point here along 12th Post Road. And I'm thinking this is actually going to be their main entry location because of where they were on the map. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to set one division here. Blocking this bridge and this ford. And I'm going to set another division here along this farm field and this road. Because if they actually do come in from this direction, they have to use this road otherwise i'm going to be marching through a lot of woodland to get to us so as we are defending right here along white spring road at the nilson farmhouse so i want to say division here division here and leave one division in reserve to respond in either direction as necessary and that's basically going to be it so because I do believe they're going to be coming in from this direction, I am going to be sending uh, Anderson's division to face off against them with the 1st and 2nd CSA mounted because they're only two brigades, once again, that have good weapons. And everybody else, 2nd uh, Division will be down here and 3rd Division in reserve. Kind of like last time. So I'm going to get my troops set up and I will be back once we have contact with the Federals. So it's, uh, my initial prediction was wrong. Where I thought the Federals were going to be coming down from this direction. They are actually coming along this road here. If I go off the soundings. If you got the volume turned up, you can hear the uh, sound of marching troops over there. So, oh, we just spotted a brigade. There we go. So I do have uh, Anderson's division moving back down to this fort over here. And I've left, uh, what division is this? Wheeler's division overwatching this bridge and Ford here. But it looks like they're pushing for this Ford. Probably because the AI knows it's uncovered. Let me get these guys moving double time. Be a bad day for us if we let them get across that Ford. the wrong division commander there we go oh no we did not artillery let's bring you over here we get some flanking firing on that ford that looks like where they are headed right now that was totally off of my predictions but that does happen i was just going off of the Direction of entry off of the campaign map, which is generally reliable, but in this case it was not. And this brigade is getting ready to break already. So this might, might be a lot like last battle, where we might be able to see them all fairly quickly. But we'll see. So I'll come on back in here. A few minutes, uh, real life, but a few seconds for you guys with the uh, contact with the Federals. All right, it's uh, 1416, and the Federals are already trying for the Ford, but they got a, a brigade that's getting ready to break, and they're about to break, crossing the Ford, and the one behind is not in hot shape either. I do have the 1st and 2nd CSA Mounted Rangers blocking the Ford right now, and they are in loose formation, firing away. And there's Washburn himself. Hopefully we catch him. You know what? No. Hopefully we don't catch him. He's not that great of a commander. Hopefully we don't hit him in the fire. 
I need to leave the bad commanders alive and kill the good ones. And it looks like they're glitching out. That's not good. There they go. And the artillery is riding right into the fire. That's even better. Where's my artillery? Get on up here, boys. Get some shots in. Oh, we're going to be sitting right outside of range. You guys can be firing at this brigade. Why are you... There we go. What were you going to do? So where's it? There he is. This division was starting to break right off the bat. So uh, let's get these guys mounted back up. And we're going to sweep in behind along with 3rd Division. There's no reason not to catch these guys up against a river. We can't do it. There's no reason not to do it. Who's wounded? Gordon. Who's Gordon? Oh, I don't know if it's a division commander. No? Turn Colonel Gordon. Battery commander? What are you guys doing over here? That's not where you're supposed to be going. Oh, dear God. I did not order this unit. <sighs> Come on. Sometimes this game with the pathfinding is just... I don't know what to say about it. Alright, lay down for now. Don't take casualties from your artillery if you can't help it. Let's get dismounted. Here comes the next customer. As soon as this brigade hits the edge of the water, we'll send our troops back up. They probably got no idea they got two divisions come. Who else is wounded? What the hell? McBride. Brigadier General McBride. Are you kidding me? Oh, I didn't want you guys to mount. Never mind. Way down. <sighs> Two commanders right off the bat. Are you kidding me? Right, stand up. Stand up. Kind of centered over here. I almost thought we had another wounded officer set alert right there. Let's do it demoralize, that's fine. It's one of the uh, artillery commanders. I think it's actually a division commander. Yeah, it is. Come on, 
get your brigades up so I can send you in on their artillery. Come on. I don't think this one will take too long. They're all getting ready to break already. Problem is, even if we win this fight, I cannot send force against Fort Wyman because he's going to have no supplies. There's more guys on this road. Never mind. Forget those orders. Come get these boys. First, you are sharpshooters. Take them down. I can use some more of their weapons. And they'll actually end up behind them. That's even better. Seeing the Osage flying batteries gone. That's not good. And Andrew's battalion is also being seen off. Oish. Morale is not good in my army, but it's actually even worse than theirs. Yeah, they're 33 to our 37, so. I got three brigades, five brigades in retreat. Go get them. Don't stop. Gascony Guard still not in position. Oh, they just took a big canister hit. 53 losses. See if we can't wipe out this battery right here with this cavalry charge. I swear if this battery breaks these two brigades, I'm calling bullshit. There they go. Good job, boys. Uh, Stan Waddy's brigade's already broken. Hit them. You turn around. Ignore the rest of them. Turn around. Ignore the retreating battery. Let's go. Forward a little bit more. Oh, you got plenty of targets in your range. These retreating units just. <sighs> distract your commanders. Go get them, get. Second Arkansas. It's a gas can aid. Second Arkansas.
This is almost a government's wet dream. Oh, crap. Fresh brigade. Turn around and face. Turn around and face. I didn't even know those boys were there. And Anderson is dead. Division commander. Awesome. Break that battery. There we go. Boys get dismounted. And our coward brigade's broken at the same time. Still have another division coming up, though. They're taking forever to get in position. But we're behind this brigade, which is good for us. First CSA is doing very good work. They're almost perked up. He has a loose order. Start heading that way. And there goes that brigade. Who is that? Salt Lake Rangers. Ugh. Everybody down this way, for the most part, is already broken. So I don't even know why they're still fighting. Quantrill, get in there. That's an engineer brigade. Go take them down. Why are you showing us flanked out? Don't let them break you. You got reserves coming up. Get the hell up here. Okay, everybody over here is broken except for the artillery. No! Damn it. Okay, there they go. They're retreating now. I didn't send the scouts out good. Keep pushing forward and shooting them. Now we got 14 minutes to do some extra damage here. Over that way. Hit that brigade. Push forward and keep firing. And more boys here are not dead. Hopefully we take some prisoners out of this brigade. With the regular brigade. Oh, they're actually fighting still. Really? Go get them. Push forward. Take down this artillery. We want to devastate this core. We need them gone from Missouri. Alright, this battery. Pushing forward, damn it. Don't stop. It's 
Stay where I want you to stay. Oh, that's a detached. It's not even a battery. Yeah. Good. Regulars are seen off. We'll get that detachment. Alright, get mounted. Get over here. Two minutes left. Not a lot of time. I was hoping to get some brigades to surrender. That just ain't happening. Uh, for CAC, mounted rangers have got a perk, so... Uh, is this it? Nope. I think it's mounted rifles is what I want. Yep. There we go. Wow, that actually went a lot better than I thought it did. I thought we took a lot more casualties than that. Holy crap. <laughs> that fight was just kind of a little bit all over the place. So uh, we took down 2,200 of their 24,000 infantry. Now this brigade did have, uh, this corps had 27,000 in it. We knocked it down to 24 and just brought it down even further. So we took out 2,200 or 24,000 infantry. We got all 100 of their guns. Total loss of 2,600 of their 25,000 man force. Well, we lost all 20 of our 9 of our guns because the entire artillery division broke. Sadly. But uh, we'll reclaim most of those guns. It shows the loss of 29 guns. We didn't lose all of that, so we still have guns. But uh, we lost 605 of our uh, 19,177 cavalry. For a total loss of 653 of our 19,418 men. I mean, 653 to 2,600. That's a little better than 4 to 1. So 4.1 to 4.2 men that we took out for every one of our losses. That's... Damn. <laughs> wow. Now let's save this real fast. Let's take a look at the paperwork. Oh, wrong button. Alright. Uh, second division did nothing. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong army. Forest Corps, there we go. Lee's division really didn't do much. Uh, second Arkansas Cavalry did 14 to infantry, 35 to artillery, took 20 prisoners. Total of 72. Stan Wadi's Brigade, which I do have to change. I'm up in the air on whether I should change their name or not. I'm thinking about calling this the Apache Rifles. Uh, as it was called historically instead of Stan Wadi's Brigade. So, could Stan Wadi's not in command of the Brigade anymore? Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I want to change the name of that Brigade to the Apache Rifles. So, he's actually a division commander in the Army of uh, the North now. So, uh, Stan Wadi's brigade did 7 to infantry, 4 to artillery, total of 11. Salt Lake Rangers did 72 to infantry, 16 to artillery, captured 68, total of 156, division total 239. Anderson's division, Gasconade Guard uh, was did not get into the fight at all. That's my fault entirely. I, I, I was trying to position them to get into the fight and they couldn't get into it. Uh, first CSA Mounted Rangers did 1,114 to infantry, 10 to artillery for a total of 1,144. So they actually caught some command staff in there also. So, yeah, they caught about 20 command staff in that shootout. Uh, second CSA Mounted Rangers. As you can see, I didn't fix any of the units because there's too many units that need to be fixed. And I just, I'll be honest, I just... I need, a, I need a keyboard with a caps lock button that lights up. To be honest with you, is what I need. Just 
just try and go through go to fix everything and then you screw it all up a second time i don't want to do that so uh second csa mounted rangers did 587 to infantry 28 to artillery patrol 618 division total 1762 wheelers division reckland raiders did 73 to infantry captured 60 two to artillery captured another 40 total of 175 Quantrill's Raiders did 89 infantry, captured 36, 13 to artillery for a total of 138. And the Rust County Raiders did captured 31 infantry, captured 132 artillery for a total of 163, division total of 476. And Stewart's Division. Uh, I don't know why all of my artillery broke, but it did. The Osage Flying Battery broke off the start, trying to get into positions, and it did nothing. Andrews Battalion did. 5 to artillery. And Gilmore's battalion did 8 to artillery. So division total of 13. And that's kind of sad. Well, staying the paper. We're going to look at if uh, we took out any of their officers. This, we lost a few. Actually, let's go back to us first. We lost... Anderson, division commander, was killed. Nobody from Lee's division. And we lost more than that. Okay, and we lost the Osage Flying Batteries commander. So we got one commander wounded, division commander dead. And Washburn was out on the firing line. He actually survived that. So we wounded the second division commander, Veal. None of his brigade commanders. We wounded Woodbury. We captured Major Jordan from the 2nd Division Artillery. It says missing here, so we captured him. And nobody from 4th Division, so... Captured one officer. Wounded two. Yep. Not that great of a trade-off. So we wounded two of their officers, captured one, but we lost a division commander dead, so I have to figure out who's going to take over this division now. And once I have to go through the promotion list, because I, I, I went through all my divisional promotions already. So uh, we got to figure that one out. So uh, once again... <laughs> Honestly, it was kind of a close-run fight. I mean, I had one entire division break plus the artillery division break. While half their half their army is already broken and not retreating. So it was a little weird. This is another close-run fight, kind of like the last one. So I definitely want to know what you all think about that. You know, not just say great or good or great fights. Like... Let me know how you really thought how I handled this one tactically. Uh, I feel like I could have done better, but at the same time, morale of both forces was really, really damn low throughout the entire fight. There's a little lower than ours, but they still almost won it. Like, I don't really know what to say about this fight. I've had messier battles, I'll be honest. I've had a lot messier ones, but I really don't know what to say about this one. So, uh, victory at Rala. The enemies reportedly suffered total casualties of 2,590 men. There are 285 killed and 1,118 captured. Our casualties total 653 men, 135 killed, 91 missing, and the rest are wounded. We've captured 1,086 rifles and 39 guns from the battlefield and sent 1,064 enemy soldiers down to our prison camps for a nice little vacation. General Anderson is now a national hero, and Washburn loses face. About damn, he should have lost face at the last battle, but he lost it with this one. I, I feel like this battle could have gone better. 
but I also miscalled the approach path and I was trying to react to that approach path and I totally for forgot about that one Ford. Fight on this map a lot and I totally forgot about that one Ford, which is generally an attack point whenever we play on it. All right, so I'm going to figure out who the new division commander is going to be. So, uh, I'll be back in, once again, a few seconds for you guys. Uh, probably about, about 40 minutes for me while I figure out who's going to take command of that division. And we'll probably close out the episode. So, I'll be back. So, uh, I have figured out who's taking command of everything here. So, I actually did promote Evans, who is the commander of the 1st CSA Mounted Rangers, is now the commander of the 1st Division of Force Corps. And I have placed the 1st CSA Mounted Rangers under Clement H. Stevens from South Carolina as his replacement. If you'd like another commander, uh, please let me know. Or if you want Evans back in command of that brigade, let me know. But uh, right now, Evans is the best cavalry commander that I have outside of Forrest. So he's at nine command stars. All the other cavalry commanders are actually six to seven stars he's the only one at nine so he got the division by default and uh clement was the most experienced commander from the state to replace him and the replacement for the commander of the osage flying battery is uh james p major as uh their commander was wounded so uh, major was the next commander up and he's a even though it's an artillery battery it's a it's a cavalry battery, it's a flying battery, so uh, he should have, he should be able to do well with it. He's shown a loss of stats taking command of it, but that should fix itself as he is a professional. So we had nobody else that we lost, yep. So, and Evans is a good choice. Like I said, his stats are well. His fame's going up, especially after this last battle. So, once again, if, like I said, if you want this, if you want Evans back in charge of the first CSA, just let me know in the comments. I'll put him back there, and I'll figure out who else is going to take his place. But uh, I do believe we're going to end this episode here. As like I said, I'm trying to keep these episodes to one battle apiece, as long as they are not too short of a battle. This one, yeah, I figure this episode. I got to put it together still. Probably about half an hour to 40 minutes even with the post-battle script. So uh, if you're a new viewer, return view, if you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you do, remember to hit that bell icon so that the next video comes out. If you like a brigade one of your armies, please let me know in the comments below. Type of unit, status from, weapons, uniforms, officers. And I'll happily oblige you on all counts if possible. And comments, comments, comments. As always, please do keep them coming. I do love interacting with everybody. And I will see you all at the next episode. Stay grumpy.